Harpy ladies and illusionary gentlemen, eccentric boys and dark magician girls, welcome to the Duologues Top 10 Yu-Gi-Oh! Clowns Festival Spectacular. We put together a fantastic show of mostly evil dual monster clowns for your enjoyment tonight. Our performers can be supported by clapping that like and subscribe button. So, please put your mystery hands together for our opening act. The first and worst clown to make this list at number 10 is a level 6 dark fiend with no attack and defense called Puppet Master. This creature debuted in the TCG in 2008, confusingly quite a few years later than its OCG 2002 release. The Puppet Master can perhaps explain its hesitancy to perform for the TCG's international audience because it was busy putting in a high-profile anime appearance during the original Duel Monsters Battle City arc. As a key piece in the Spirit of the Millennium Ring strategy to beat Yami Merrick during their epic shadow game atop the Kaiba Corp airship. It's fitting that Yami Bakuro would favor this performer whose strength is not in its attack points, but in its indirect manipulation of its environment, using its cursed rings to surround its adversary with its ghoulish supporting axe. The main attraction of Yami Bakura's plot was to use Puppet Master to fill his board with fiendish fodder that he could then tribute to summon the Winged Dragon of Ra that he stole from Yami Merrick with exchange hijinks. God card repossessed, he would puppet Yami Merrick's ace monster to an easy victory. Except no, Yami Bakura would go on to lose this shadow game despite the advantages he generated using Puppet Master. But this would little affect the spirit's sinister plans. As unknown to anyone else, including the fragment of the original Merrick Ishtar cohabiting Bakura Ryo's body, the Millennium Ring Spirit had already stashed a portion of its eventual essence in the fragment of Yukimoto's Millennium Puzzle. But what can the Puppet Master actually do? Upon Tribute Summon and at the cost of 2,000 light points, you can target and special summon two fiend monsters from your graveyard. They can't attack this turn, but you can absolutely XCs or link them away to access stronger monsters that can. Next question. Was it any good? No, it was not. The 2,000 life point cost is whatever, but only being able to activate its effect on Tribute Summon really cut this card's strings. Reviving two monsters is a great effect, and fiends have a ton of support, but tributing is one of the most inconvenient forms of summoning. Sure, there's no restrictions on cheating Puppet Master into the field, but unless it arrives on its own tributed terms, it's leaving its tricks behind, and that zero attack points is just a target for your opponent's monsters. The most tragic part of this macabre would-be entertainer is that without the tributing condition, this card would be silly good, booking places in competitive decks all over and probably somewhere on the ban list. But enough tragedy, there will be plenty of that later on. On to another sinister clown with a slightly happier competitive tale. Legion, the Fiend Jester, is the follow-up act billing at number 9 on today's top 10. Don't let this level 4 dark fool's name fool you. It is a spellcaster and not a fiend, and it has 1300 attack and 1500 defense. It is the effect of granting you one additional tribute summon of a spellcaster type monster in attack position, and when its act is over, it fetches another normal spellcaster from your deck to your hand. It didn't debut as an actual card until 2015 in Duelist Pact Battle City, 12 years after Arcane used it against Pharaoh Tem in episode 60 of the Duel Monsters anime. It's unfortunate that this devilish conjurer didn't make himself appear in the TCG until late in the XE's era because he might have seen staple, or at least a situational play, if he had entered alongside his arrival in the anime. You could normal summon him, tribute for a Dark Magician girl, search for Dark Magician from your deck, and then set your one copy of Mirror Force and pass turn. But that's in a timeline kinder to this down-on-his-luck jokester. But in Duel Links, Legion the Fiend Jester was okay. A super rare in the app's second mini-box Flame of the Tyrant, it was a decent extension and floater for the early era before stronger cards crept into the game. While it was never a show-stomping performer, Legion the Fiend Jester is included in King of Games decklist, mostly as a great lead into the Silent Magician retrain. But it has also seen some viability in Exodia decks following the release of Yugimoto and the Grandpa's card skill. Legion, alongside a Blue Dragon Summoner, were great targets for the equip spell Wander One, which would then let you tribute the equip spell caster to draw two cards in addition to the Exodia piece they would search. Never count this scrappy clown out because just like its Patron Duelist, it always has a trick up its sleeve. So, what's next on this list? What clown is discarding one to special summon itself from your hand into the number 8 spot? Hold your cues, because he needs those question marks for his costume, it's the Tricky. This level 5 wind spellcaster has 2,000 attack, 200 defense, and a coveted place in the decklist of OG King of Games Feral Attempt. Debuted in episode 221, the Tricky was a late addition to the Duel Monsters anime only appeared in the final duel between Yugi Moto and his Yami counterpart, the Pharaoh. In addition to just being the grand finale to the entire series, an interesting component of this duel is the splitting of Yugi's deck. 
In this match, we see Yama Yugi making use of mystical themed cards like Dark Magician and Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast, while Yugi lays claim to the other stables like the Magnet Warriors and his new ace monster, Gandora the Dragon of Destruction. With only a handful of miscellaneous TCG placements, the tricky spot in the Pharaoh's final deck list is probably the most noteworthy inclusion it's got, but it does also appear in the Yu-Gi-Oh! R manga and in the second opening for the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX anime. Reigning at number 7 on this list is Jester Queen. Interestingly, absent from both a TCG and OCG, Jester Queen is a Duel Links exclusive to level 2 Dark Spellcaster with 800 attack and defense. That stat sum might seem unimpressive, but she's coolly capable of clowning opponents with her tricky effect. If you control no other monsters, Jester Queen gets an additional attack for each card in your spell and trap card zones. She does blow up your back row and summon, but to Jester Queen OTK Duel Links pros, that's just clearing space for your mage power or united we stand. Or since it's Duel Links, let's be honest, Power of the Guardians. A Jester Queen equipped with three copies of Power of the Guardians is capable of attacking for 11,400 points of damage total in one battle phase. The spell card Jester's Panic, which is also a Duel Links exclusive, depicts Jester Queen alongside the other members of her court, Jester Lord and Jester Confit, two monsters which are actually playable in the TCG. This spell is meant to help your Jester Queen gain the ability to attack directly while clearing one of your opponent's spells or traps, but it's clunky and difficult to use. Jester Queen is too, but it's still a fun gimmicky card with appearances in the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds anime, where she's used by a Lazar, a professional henchman who looks like a clown. Although Lazar works for Rex Goodwin and opposes Team 5Ds, but eventually comes around and throws him with a satellite to repel the world and in shenanigans of Iliastor. Despite his initial skeeviness, Lazar is actually a dedicated family man with a wife and son, who are just as dedicated to the silly clown aesthetic as he is. Jester Queen Duel Link's gimmickry is fun, but ultimately Jester Queen is on this list because she's the most exclusive ace of a clown duelist from a clown family. Interestingly, Lazar hasn't made his way to Duel Links yet, despite his ace monster being added back in 2019. Stepping into the ring to guide our list to the number 6 spot is Amazement Administrator Arlecchino. This level 6 Dark Psychic has 2600 attack and 2200 defense, making it the highest base stat line of the axe we'll be seeing tonight. He is one of two central main bosses of the Amazement archetype, which is built around the idea of a fun amusement park full of rides and activities. Arlecchino can banish Amazement traps from the graveyard to pop opposing monsters. And if your opponent summons while Arlecchino has taken the field, you can equip an attraction trap from your deck to one of those monsters, implying that the equipped monster is too busy having fun at Amazement Precious Park to participate fully in the duel. Also, when an attraction trap is activated, Arlecchino can special summon itself from your hand. This card released relatively recently in 2021's Lightning Overdrive set, but hasn't seen much in the way of competitive play. But the archetype is so entertaining and circus coded, it felt wrong to not have a place for it on this list. And the complementary nature of the amazement theme and gameplay deserves note. For the number 5 spot on this list, we're diving back more than 20 years to 2002 set Metal Raiders. This set introduced many important cards to the game whose influence would echo through the years and now decades. Cards like the Jin Monsters, Thunder Dragon, Witch of the Black Forest, and even Change of Heart. But we're not talking about any of these heavy hitters. We're talking clowns. We're talking iconic level 3 Dark Spellcaster Normal Clowns. For number 5, we're talking about Sagi the Dark Clown. With an underwhelming stat line of 1500 defense and only 600 attack, you could be forgiven for underestimating this unassuming clown, but to do so is at your own peril. In the first arc of the original Duel Monsters anime, Sagi was used to devastating effect by disgraced world champion and youth tech CEO Seto Kaiba. Actually, at this point, Sagi was the only monster in Kaiba's deck with less than 1500 attack, which was intentional. Kaiba needed a low-level dark monster to resolve his lethal crush card virus a card that was very good in the TCG and seriously unhinged in the anime. IRL, Crush Card Virus tributes a dark monster with a thousand less attack to destroy every monster in your opponent's hand and field with 1500 or more attack. On top of that, the virus would infect their next three draws, requiring them to reveal the card to destroy it if the monster's attack is too high. In the anime, the tributed monster instead had to be destroyed by battle, but the virus infected your opponent's entire deck. Soggy, much weaker than the ferocious dragons and beast warriors that Kaiba tended to otherwise favor, in fact, Sagi is probably a clown because to Kaiba, weak monsters are a joke. And the only thing he wants from Sagi is for it to be destroyed. Although the crush card virus went off as intended against Yugimoto, when Kaiba deployed the same tactic against Maximilian Pegasus, the dual monster creator was able to outplay the world champion, manipulating the virus to instead burn through Kaiba's deck, sparing only Sagi. With no friends and no hope left of winning, Kaiba defiantly reigns a defeat, summoning Sagi as his final move. 
one Pegasus quickly disposes of with a clan-like monster of his own, Bookery Box, leaving Kaiba with no cards left to play. On the competitive scene, there's not much to talk about besides one cheeky side deck appearance from a tournament in Atlanta, Georgia back in 2008. And for the number four spot, we've got a clown who's pretty much the opposite of Sagi. Luber, the Jester of Despia, is an effect monster with no anime importance, but lots of competitive placements. It's a level 4 Dark Fairy with 1800 attack and 0 defense that fetches a branded Spell or Trap card on summon. If that's all Luber did, it'd still be decent, but it also has the ability to summon itself from the graveyard when one of your fusion monsters is destroyed by battle or sent away from the field by a card effect. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Is that all? No! Uncontent to share the spotlight, when a Luber takes the stage by way of its graveyard effect, it also targets an opponent's monster and negates that effect until the end of the turn. So, what is an Aluber exactly? Well, it's the twisted form of one of the Dogmatica, spun from a dark ritual involving many years and the sacrifice of many saints at the treacherous hands of the movement's leader, Dogmatica Maximus. The Dogmatica Sanctum and Devoted would warp in an instant, from its previous fascistic and inquisition-like aesthetic, to a darkly comic Despia theater of the Brandon, with Maximus in his new form, Dramaturge of Despia. The fall of Dogmatica to Despia is interesting. If you've ever cheated on Yu-Gi-Oh by playing card games with normal playing cards, you might have noted the Jokers are often wild cards, capable of overturning the hierarchy of jacks and queens and kinks. Looks like 5 card draw has more in common with Yu-Gi-Oh than just the amount of cards in your start in hand. Anyway, Aluber was one of the Despia denizens fought by the heroes of the story, Dragon Boy Fallen of Albaz, and the fugitive 665 Saint Dogmatica Ecclesia the Virtuous. But how did Aluber fare in the competitive scene? Very, very, very well. Branded strategies were huge and still are. Branded Despia still holds tier 3 status and mastery at the time of the script being written. But if a Luber is so good, why is it only number 4 on this list? Well, this is a top 10 list of silly clowns. A Luber is a cornerstone to a powerful strategy in modern Yu Gi Oh! and that's impressive, but not really the silliest. Hiri Hiri, Apostle of Dogmatica, get ready to get goofy. Jumping from one scary clown to another, the coveted position of number 3 in this list's video snow build goes to a duo of clowns that perform in tandem. First, the level 3 Earth Warrior, Dream Clown. It's got 1200 attack and 900 defense, but it's not the stats that make Dream Clown's talents famous. Nope, that would be the very silly effect it has to target and destroy an opponent's monster when switched from attack to defense position. This effect complements Crass Clown, the other clown we'll be talking about for the number 3 spot on this list. Crass Clown is a level 4 fiend with 1350 attack and 1400 defense, with the effect to bounce an enemy monster back to the hand without targeting, igniting when shifted from defense position to attack position. These goofy goons are the backbone of clown control, a silly strategy still played in goat format. The idea is to get some combination of Dream and Crass Clown on your field, and then using cards like Zero Gravity, Stumbling, and especially Labyrinth of Nightmare to keep your cards dancing between attack and defense, continually bouncing and target destroying the whole time. Blade Rabbit is another monster who essentially does the same thing as Dream Clown, and is a staple in clown control, but didn't release until 2005 and isn't a clown. So we'll be ignoring it for the rest of this video while we talk about the original clown crew, which both debuted in 2002 with Metal Raiders alongside previous entrant Sagi the Dark Clown. Once the build was set, these clowns could generate advantage at no card cost with the slow erosion of their silly dancing. This strategy was even one of the first real meta decks in Duel Links, with both clowns easily obtainable in the game's first main box, The Ultimate Rising, and Labyrinth of Nightmare being available from the card trader. Crass Clown even had an anime appearance, albeit a brief one. In episode 17 of the Duel Monsters anime, Bones summoned this card in his duel against Joey Wheeler in the area of Lost Souls. Bones, who was working as a henchman for Bandit Keith at the time, wanted to summon Crass Clown in face-up defense mode, a legal move in Duelist Kingdom, perhaps with the intention of using its effect to bounce some of Joey's board. But Bandit Keith had different plans, ordering his flunky to play Crass Clown in attack mode, inviting its destruction at the hands of Joey's Flame Swordsman. This was all a trap, of course, as Bones Call the Haunted resurrected Crass Clown as Clown Zombie, a level 2 dark zombie with 1350 attack and no defense, one of the earliest additions in a long line of undead Yu-Gi-Oh cards with zero defense. Because Duelist Kingdom was basically the Wild West of Yu-Gi-Oh written before all the rules of the game had yet been solidified, Bones' Clown Zombie received a 30% power bonus from the Arena of Lost Souls, giving it a perplexing total of 1755 attack points. And surprise, just when you think you know where the show is going, your expectations are subverted. That's a clown's job, and Fiend Comedian does it well. Well enough to be this list's number 2 spot, despite being a trap card. 
Although we don't actually have a fiend comedian monster yet, the trap depicts a duo of creatures, and we actually have a duo of artworks to look at because this card was redrawn for its TCG release back in the 2003 set, Legacy of Darkness. Fiend Comedian's OCG art is much scarier, while the international artwork leans more on the comedian side of its name. And while we're talking comedy, here's a fun joke. A normal trap that resolves its effect based on a coin flip saw actual competitive, decent competitive placements in the TCG over the years. This could be a surprise for casual logs listeners who probably drifted off to sleep by this point in the list, but if you're a Giga Chad who demonstrated tremendous heart of the cards by running this trap in your Infernoid, Zodiac, or Lightsworn decks, Sounds off in the comments. Anyway, effects that rely on chance are generally not very good in Yu-Gi-Oh! But Fiend Comedian makes up for this with two outrageous effects that can both be situationally useful, and even game-winning. Here's how it goes. First, flip a coin. On heads, banish your opponent's entire graveyard. On tails, select cards from your deck equal to the count of your opponent's graveyard and send those cards to your graveyard. In modern Yu-Gi-Oh!, the graveyard is often used like a second hand, where resources and cards with useful graveyard effects can be stored so casually banishing your opponent's entire graveyard can shut down entire strategies. It's hard to get your game on when your Miracle Fusion has no targets. But what about the Tails effect of stacking your own grave? Well, Foolish Burial is a normal spell that can send one monster from your deck to the grave, and it's been limited to one copy for over a decade. And on successful resolution, Fiend Comedian lets you send more than one of anything to send. There's as many different ways for this effect to be busted as there are strategies that synergize with the grave. But let's look at a quick example, Light's Horns. The Light's Horn strategy is an aggressive playstyle centered around sending cards to the top of your deck to the graveyard to pull off searches and removals and deep draws. One of the original boss monsters, Judgment Dragon, had access to a powerful board clearing effect. It could be special summoned for free from your hand when you have four or more Light's Horn monsters with different names in your grave. Or there's Wolf, Light Horn Beast, a level 4 beast warrior with 2100 attack that summons itself when it's sent from the deck to the grave. And this is not once per turn. You could mill three copies of Wolf with Fiend Comedian and immediately crank them all onto the field. There are so many other ways to use this graveyard stack in effect, but you get the idea. But if both effects of Fiend Comedian are so strong, why has it seen only niche play? Well, there is the inherent unreliability of the coin flip to think of, but a couple more factors also make this card risky. A Tails resolution during the late game could easily mill your entire deck, in which case hopefully it's your turn and you've got gas, because if the turn belongs to your opponent, then they just have to hit their end phase and you're cooked. And another risk element, the strength of this card relies entirely on your opponent's graveyard. If the grave doesn't factor into your opponent's strategy, this can be an early dead game draw, and at best, a chance to mill some cards that might not even go off. And this is all assuming that your opponent doesn't want their cards banished. Sure, a Fiend Comedian can help you pull off a surprise win, but it can also cause you to lose against Goaty, so use with caution. And that's a lot about this funky trap, but there's even more because in Duel Links, this card is frequently paired alongside Satoris Kumar's Master of Destiny skill. Originally intended to synergize with the coin-flipping Arcana Force monsters, duelists discovered that Master of Destiny, which guarantees the first three flip coins land heads, works better with other cards like Desperado Barrel Dragon. This strategy terrorized the Duel Links ladder, particularly in early 2021, but can still be rogue viable in present day, and is the reason cards like Head Judging caught restrictions. Because Master of Destiny would only work in decks with at least seven different coin flip cards, Fiend Comedian was a valuable inclusion for building to that total. Unfortunately, only one copy was ever made available on Duel Links, and you have to grind Satoris Kumar to level 45 to get it, which is a long climb for a card so niche. Boo, I'm from the future. OMG, are you me from the future? No, I'm just from the future. Oh, well can I help you? Yes, on June 8th, something amazing is going to happen. Oh, is that when I meet my future wife? Or maybe land my dream job? Even better, it's when the new VTuber Corp starred by the Duologs is launched, and it takes the world by storm. What's a VTuber Corp? Oh, it's kind of like a talent agency where they hire on talented streamers and take a cut of their earnings in order to hire managers, editors, set up whatever merch they want, and organize conventional appearances for them. That sounds like a scam. Why would a streamer want to sign up for that when they can't do it themselves? Because the logistics behind doing all that extra stuff is a huge pain in the butt, and they'd rather just focus on streaming. Oh, I guess that makes sense. So are the ones from Glitch Stars any good? Well, you'll have to see for yourself on June 8th. Just click the link in the video description and watch. You pay for the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. So you have to pay for it? No, it's it's free. That's just that's just the saying. And taking the number one spot on this list, the finale of this top 10 Big Top Circus 
is Performer Pal Skullcrabat Joker. This level 4 dark spellcaster with 1800 attack and 100 defense searches on normal summon. He's got a lot of tricks and a wide range of monsters he can fetch from the deck. On resolution of his monster effect, Skullcrabat Joker can add one Performer Pal or Magician Pendulum Monster or Odd Eyes Monster from your deck to your hand. These are all archetypes used by the Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 anime protagonist Yuya Sakaki. And Skullcrabat Joker himself bears a resemblance to Yuya, which makes sense. Yuya is the connection between pals, pendulum magicians, and odd eyes. It tracks that Yuya's card doppelganger can fetch all of his favorite cards. Skullcrabat Joker's pendulum effect, which limits the monsters you can pendulum summon to the three archetypes you can search, is less helpful than the monster effect, but does compare with the usefully high pendulum scale of 8. Critically, Skullcrabat's 8 is high enough to allow key level 7 monsters like Odd Eyes Dragon or Dragon Pet Magician to hit the field. Debuting in late 2015 Master of Pendulum Structure deck, this consistency clown was very accessible to players and saw competitive play immediately. A lot of competitive play. Almost 600 appearances on ranking deck lists. And that's even with it catching a total ban for a chunk of time from 2018 to 2021, when usage understandably dipped. Now, Skulker Bat may have been very good in the TCG, but in Duel Links, it was also pretty dang good. Like many decks, Pendulum's meta-relevancy evolved with changing skills and shifts in the comparatively more strict Duel Links ban list. The odd combo Performer Pals slash Pendulum Magicians slash Odd Eyes had their time in the Duel Links Sun, largely because of skills which made Pendulums easier to play, in particular the Raging Pendulum skill, still a viable rogue strategy at the time of this video. Raging Pendulum was intended to help players summon Odd Eyes Raging Dragon by giving the player dedicated Pendulum Zones and letting them add Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon and a Magician Pendulum Monster from hand or deck face up to the extra deck. Additionally, you could count XC's monsters as level 7s when summoning Odd Eyes Raging Dragon. Performer Pal Skullcrabat Joker has never flubbed a performance or missed a trick. This reliable clown always brings the house, stealing both the show and the number one spot in this festive Yu-Gi-Oh clown rundown. Alright, and that's the list. There are actually so many clowns in Yu-Gi-Oh, so if I missed your favorite, or if you have ideas for future videos just like this one, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments.